Good morning, IG family. I know I'm running a little bit late. I did start a live video, but had some issues with um, little people in the house. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and record the video here on Instagram Live now, all about talking about food addiction. And then I'm going to download the video, post it to my IGTV, and also stick it on my Facebook business page. So you can find it anytime. All right, so let's first talk about the anatomy of a food addiction. When you think about, sorry, excuse me. When you think about the foods that you're addicted to, or if you're if you're wondering if maybe you have a food addiction, the first thing that I would encourage you to do is think about the foods that you're going to when you're snacking, because that's typically the time when you know if you're eating a, a, a big enough meal in your day, if you're eating a big enough breakfast, you're eating a big enough lunch, you're eating a big enough dinner. You don't, you shouldn't really need to snack. And you know my famous saying, and I think I feel, I feel like I need to like get a magnet that says it so that I can hand it out to my clients is, why are you snacking? all day long are you a goat why are you eating all day <laughs> you should not be eating these small meals throughout your day you shouldn't need to so the first thing that i would encourage you to do is to look at kind of your eating habits and hang on one second this is not hey wendy thanks for joining um so the first thing that i would encourage you to do to to decide whether or not you actually have a true food addiction is to think about if you're snacking throughout your day the second thing that i would encourage you to do is if you are snacking throughout your day, what are the things that you're snacking on? Are you snacking on fruits and vegetables or are you snacking on things like potato chips and um, ice cream, chocolate, candy? Like what is it that you're reaching for when you're snacking? And you can just drop that in the comments below and let me know, um, you know, what, what are the things that you're typically snacking on? Because that's a huge indicator of whether or not you actually have a true food addiction. Um, there's also the way your body reacts, right? So if you're someone who binge eats, um, kind of goes off the rails and eats a whole bunch of different things throughout the day, or you know, you go to a barbecue and you're eating the macaroni salad, the potato salad, you're having the ice cream for dessert, you're eating whipped cream, you're eating whatever's on the table kind of a thing, you know, how do you feel after a binge? How does your body react? Do you feel like um, hung over? You know, how are you feeling? These are all indicators of a true food addiction. So somebody asked um, in the questions on in my IG stories, um, how do I know whether or not I'm addicted or I'm just an undisciplined eater? Well, I think that you have to look at, again, what you're eating, if you're snacking throughout the day, what you're snacking on, and then what happens and how you feel after like a typical binge. And are you binging? Are you a binge eater? If you are you know, snacking on healthy stuff throughout the day, it might just be a nutrient necessity that needs to be met because maybe you're working out or you're sweating a little bit more, or like now during the summer, maybe you're not drinking enough water and you're not hydrated enough, so you're eating things like cucumbers and watermelons. You know, that I wouldn't call food addiction. That's some sort of like a nutrient deficiency that you're trying to meet. Um, but if you find that in stressful situations or during emotional times, you're going to, to the pantry and you're pulling out a bag of potato chips and you're eating the whole entire bag, that's a food addiction. And let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of a food addiction. I actually have a client who I'm working with now who's battling a little bit of a food addiction. And, you know, she said to me, I had a mental breakthrough. I realized that I really am addicted to food. And, you know, it's it's coming to terms with like the mindset and how to um, have enough willpower to overcome this food addiction. And, you know, one of the things that I said to her was, be careful there because, it's not just about willpower. Anybody who's addicted to food, it's similar to being addicted to a chemical substance because the foods that you're addicted to, potato chips, um, you know, any kind of candy in the candy aisle, your ice creams, any of those things, anything that's processed food. Maybe you're addicted to frozen burritos. Maybe you're addicted to anything that's processed food. If you are binging on things like that, that is a true chemical addiction because let me tell you something these companies like if you think of like a mcdonald's right mcdonald's is a multi-billion dollar company and they are employing the best of the best i mean they're going into you know technical institutes and they're going into food schools where you know people are food scientists and they are skimming from the cream of the crop and offering them millions of dollars in income to create these kind of Franken foods, as I like to call them, that will hit the pleasure center in your brain the same as a chemical um, substance would. So 
you know, we all have these kind of dopamine centers in our brains and exercise reliefs, releases endorphins. And that's why when you exercise and you work out first thing in the morning, you're much less likely to reach for something like candy or an unhealthy food because that dopamine center is already getting hit by the flood of endorphins from your workout. Um, however, things like chemical substances, drugs, alcohol, those things hit those chemical centers too and tell your body, I need more. And that's how addictions form. It's a real biological, like it's an addiction. It's a reaction from, in your, from within your brain. Um, sugar and processed foods, white flowers, those have the same exact chemical reaction in your brain as something like a drug or alcohol same exact chemical reaction so when you eat those foods they release these endorphins they hit that dopamine center they flood your body with these feel-good feels and your body and your brain are like yes give me more of that so cheese casein is the same exact thing um, it's a chemical that is created to release these feel-good hormones and to keep you addicted to that food to keep you coming back for more now a place like McDonald's not only do they have these food engineers that create these like perfect Franken foods that will hit those dopamine centers and keep you coming back from more but they also have marketing psychologists so red and yellow are colors that are known and they symbolize and they're known to induce hunger in people think about McDonald's think about your Arby's your Burger King what are the main colors in their advertising it's all red and yellow um, so you've got a couple of different things going on here, right? So if you're somebody who cannot drive past a McDonald's without smelling the smell and seeing the golden arches and having a reaction and being like, Arr! it's all because of, it's, it's a reaction that's been engineered out of billions of dollars in marketing strategies, the psychology of eating, you know, food engineering, all of those things, even the smell of the French fries, that is a smell that's created. These are all things, it's all part of the experience that's meant to keep you addicted, to bring you back, to continue to eat those foods. Cheeses are the same. Candy is the same. Anything that's a processed food, potato chips, from the sound of the crinkle in the bag, I'm not even kidding you. And I think that this is, this is like something that was a little bit mind blowing to me when I first learned about it. They have engineers who engineer the crinkle in the bag and the crunch of the chip to give you these kind of releases of endorse uh, releases of endorphins to get you coming back for more and to get you to keep going. You know, they say a serving size of chips is 13 chips. Well, somebody whose brain and they also there's a lot of um, research into the anatomy of our brains too and the anatomy of addiction and the biology of addiction. Um, there's people who have just biologically our brains are developed differently to be more addictive um dr wendy you're on today you might even be able to speak directly to that um people are we develop differently are we're built differently every single person is unique so people who don't have maybe as developed um motivation or willpower centers in their brains are going to be more easily persuaded by these kinds of things and that's the majority of people that's not a minority that's not like somebody is unique just because of those things because that's not as developed in them um, that's the majority of people and then you add to it you know the dulling of our senses through all of these different processed foods and the psychology of it and the crinkle of the bag and the crunch of the chip and you know our willpower is something that will break very easily and it's because of a chemical reaction in our brains um, so so that's how you can tell the difference between undisciplined eating and a food addiction. And if you're eating in an undisciplined way, that's like disordered eating. Um, so that's something totally different. And I can talk about that in, an, in a different um, IG live if you want me to, but that's something totally different. Um, being somebody who is an undisciplined eater, that's disordered eating and that's something totally different. But a food addiction is you can't walk by that cabinet without feeling like that food that you're addicted to, the chips, the candy, the ice cream, the whatever is calling you. And in times of stress or where you're, you know, maybe a little bit more emotionally feeling more vulnerable, those are the foods that you go to and you can't stop yourself. Like you physically feel like you cannot stop yourself that's the difference um, in terms of intuitive eating so that you can stop tracking foods forever 
a lot of that has to do with eating mindfully and quite honestly um you know that's a whole again other ig live you know intuitive eating is something that we are born with and then again it's dulled you know if you watch your children if you have small children at home kids are really good at being in tuned with their bodies and knowing what they need in terms of their nutrients um sleep even you know a kid will tell you like mom i have to go to bed i'm really tired it's time to go to sleep <laughs> um, but they'll also go into the fridge and reach for the things that they want they'll intuitively stop eating when they're not hungry it's society and this like you have to eat until your plate is cleared or you know here's you know let's go to mcdonald's and get a happy meal it's all of these things that have kind of dulled that in us so eating mindfully is really you know coming back to and learning your hunger cues again and also learning your fullness cues and eating about 80 percent to where your fullness typically is and just knowing yourself you know understanding um you know i'm hungry right now what are my hunger cues for some people it's um foggy brains for some people it's lack of concentration for some people it is throbbing headaches for some people it's stomach grumbles for some people it's i mean it's different in almost every person um i have a whole mindful eating course that's actually on sale right now you can go to the link in my profile and access the mindful eating course and that teaches all of the ways to get back to intuitive eating so so that you don't have to ever track a calorie ever again. That being said, when you're shifting from one lifestyle to the next, tracking can be beneficial just to see where you maybe are overeating or even undereating at times. Um, so, you know, tracking in times of transition is a good thing um, just so that you can track, you know, what you're getting, maybe where you're getting not enough. Maybe you think you're eating, you know, full servings of vegetables at every single meal, but you're getting less than half of a serving. Um, and so when, as you transition, tracking is good but it's you know knowing how long you need to track for so being kind of aware of and super aware of like okay now it's become a compulsion and this is no longer serving me so I need to stop um, and just deleting the apps off your phone and trusting yourself and trusting your intuition um, so tracking can be good, but it's all about, you know, figuring out your, your hunger cues and your fullness cues and kind of getting back to that. So like I said, I have a whole entire, um, mindful eating online course. It's all self-paced. Everything is in the app. You can just go through it at your own time. You can access it at any time. You get lifetime, lifetime access to it. It gives you, um, there's journals that you can fill out. There are exercises that you can do. And I give you um, all, you know, sound strategies the whole way through to really get yourself back to that intuitive eating. So I hope that answers your question. Um, like I said, it's just about kind of getting back to understanding your hunger and your fullness cues. Um, and because of what we do as a society to dull all those things sometimes it takes a relearning um so the um like i said my mindful eating course is on sale right now you can um access it through the link in my bio you get lifetime access to it you get to all self-paced you take it at your own pace um and you can also ask me questions as you go obviously of course um, so I hope that answers your questions about eating addiction. It is an addiction. Food addiction is an addiction. It's a chemical reaction. It's bio, it's biological. It's all of those things. And it's just like anything else. You know, you have to take it one step at a time, one day at a time and start to really put some mindfulness into practice. Um, I do work with people with food addictions. Um, and I do try to, you know, take them through the steps in the process of breaking those addictions. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Again, the link in my bio, you can just click on that and you can schedule a, you know, 15 minute free consultation with me. I can give you a couple of pointers and we can see if working together might be a really good logical next step for you if you feel like you're struggling with food addiction. All right. I hope you guys are having a great day. Take care.